Hey guys, you're watching Cutie Crafts, or in this video, Cutie Gardens, and this is an update to my 2021 raised garden bed video. It's my third year trying to garden in a raised garden bed, and after learning a lot from your helpful comments and suggestions, I wanted to show you guys how my plants did over the years and how I've changed things up for my third year so that I can hopefully get a much better plentiful harvest. So in the first year of my raised garden bed, I was definitely more focused on just making the structure of the bed and I didn't really properly learn what was best to grow the vegetables so they didn't grow too well and I think there were quite a few contributing factors to them not doing so well. The first one was that I used a plastic weed barrier. A lot of you guys said not to use a weed barrier but the reason why I wanted to have something down there was because I have a lot of tree roots in the surrounding area and they are known to just pop out and become a tree. I wanted to have something there to at least prevent those roots from getting into all of the good soil. Um, but I think it was too strong. The water didn't drain as well and so instead I should have used a fabric weed barrier. That year it also rained a lot and there were some periods of cold weather, hail. Why? No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> oh no! So their growth might have been stunted a little bit. Another factor was just the soil. A lot of you mentioned that the soil I was using, um, just the garden soil and three-in-one soil, they weren't nutritious enough for all of my plants and I also didn't add any fertilizer at all so that's probably why they didn't grow. Also because I was so uh, focused on making the video and creating this structure, I uh, planted all of my seedlings and the uh, plants all at the wrong time. I think I planted them way too late so they didn't grow as well as they would have if I planted at the correct time. So yeah, that, that was my first year. It was a bit sad seeing that uh, all of my effort and the money that I spent on the raised garden bed only resulted in a few tomatoes, carrots, tiny tiny carrots and a single bell pepper but it was a great learning experience because the next year 2022 I changed the weed barrier into a weed fabric and that helped the drainage so much more um, I bought this kind of pellet chicken manure that I used to amend the soil whenever I was planting uh, something into the bed uh, I definitely saw much better results in the second year because I was more aware of uh, making sure the soil had enough nutrition and drainage. We are cutting the spaghetti squash. Look how big it is. It's the biggest spaghetti squash I've ever grown. Well, this is only the second time I've tried growing a spaghetti squash. Wow! This one's not as big, but I think it's also ready. Ta -da! This is the size I was expecting for my spaghetti squash. This is what size we had in 2020 when I first tried to grow it. So I think this one is also ready. This one is green, but it's still a spaghetti squash. I don't know why these ones looked like this compared to the others. We got more bell peppers that time. Tomatoes grew pretty tall and wild. I don't know what kind of tomatoes these were, but they weren't the round ones. They were probably paste tomatoes and they had this weird butt looking shape. I finally got some really nice eggplants. These added such a cool color to the garden and they tasted really good as well. I got three of these nice purple ones and then lots and lots of beans. My first bean, yay. These are the ones my mom got. My dad really likes cooking pole beans and we ate lots of this kind of dish. 
It's September now. This is the last spaghetti squash of the season. Look how big she is. Oh, hello, bumblebee. This is another pretty big one. And then we still have lots of beans growing. This is a pepper plant that this bee is in. That is a good harvest for this year. But I ran into another problem, which I never thought about, animals. I had a groundhog living under my shed uh, that's right beside this bed. And this groundhog, he just waited for my plants to grow. It was like a buffet for him. So he just came whenever he wanted and he ate all of my romaine lettuce and ate some of my cucumber leaves. I could only do one thing, which was I destroyed the shed. It wasn't even a really nice shed. I wanted to get rid of it anyway, but that was how I got rid of the groundhog. And we haven't had any problems with him since. This was also my second year trying to grow carrots. And I finally learned this year that two layers is not enough to grow carrots because they need at least more than 12 inches. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they're all too close together. They smell so good. Ooh. At least they grow. They try to grow. But not too thick. Not long enough. It looks pretty thick. So this year, I added another layer because in the spring, there were some workers who came over to fix our fence and in the process, they completely destroyed the bed, which is one of the benefits of making a planter block bed because you can take it apart and all reassemble it all together without any trouble. Like You don't have to nail anything back uh, and it's really easy to move around. Um, but because they did that, it gave me an opportunity to readjust some things with the bed, to take in some of your suggestions, and to um, add a brand new layer of, onto this so that it's a three-layer raised garden bed. And of course, I got much better soil so that my veggies can grow really well. These are the original dimensions of my two-layered raised garden bed. So to add a third layer, I got two 8-foot cedar planks as well as two 12-foot cedar planks that I cut into the right dimensions with an extra 1-foot. Then of course I needed 8 more planter blocks to connect them all together. Since this is brand new cedar, I'm going to put it in the second layer, the middle layer, so that it looks like a stripe is going through. They're all going to eventually turn the same color, but just for this project today, I'm going to put it in the middle. So that step is completely unnecessary. You can just add the bricks on top and then add the new wood, but I just like to have symmetry in my garden bed design. For this one foot of wood that is left over, I'm going to turn this into a garden sign. It says, welcome to our garden, um, but I need to figure out how to do that. Now we have to add a whole bunch of soil, but this year I'm going to try to reduce the amount of soil that I need by putting one layer of branches and also adding some extra cardboard over the weed fabric. Um, that might be a bit overkill, but I just really want to make sure there aren't any roots coming out. I also like using weed barrier to protect the wood on the sides from deteriorating over time. I know there's so much debate on whether you even need a barrier. It's just going to prevent worms from getting into your soil. But I think it's best for my garden and my situation with all the tree roots that come out from the ground. Um, and I also added the cardboard to help the branches go in without poking holes into the fabric. Once I got all those branches in there, I added my old soil to the bottom. You could probably find some other fillers to help reduce the soil you need. 
And then I filled the top with good soil, so this raised bed potting mix. I know that you could probably just mix your own raised bed soil using the same ingredients as this store-bought one and it will be just as good, maybe a little cheaper, but out of convenience and ease of access for me, I just bought this from the store. It filled up my bed pretty quickly and the soil is really great quality. You can just tell the difference in this year's soil from my first year's. I'll definitely need some more for next year. Last year, I found this really nice reed fence to add behind the garden bed and it helped block out some of the old fence that we have there. Um, I think it really elevated the overall look of it. This year, I also learned to start some seeds indoors and to grow these little seedlings by my window so that once it got warmer, I could plant them right into the raised bed. I was very happy with the romaine lettuce and how it was growing. I had some bok choy, Swiss chard, cabbage, and then tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, pepper on this side. On the left side here, I've got some pole beans, uh, bitter melon, some eggplants, and I also started growing some marigolds this year because I heard it could help with pests. I don't know how true that is, but they are also really pretty, so they added a nice touch of color to the garden. Because I like to grow a lot of vining plants, I needed some sort of support to help them grow vertically so that they won't spread out too crazily. I was envisioning an arch that would be covered in the plant leaves and my mom helped me make this structure and tie those strings around to help guide the plants up there. This is what my garden bed looks like as of July 2023. I already harvested a lot of the romaine lettuce that was over here. And then I got lots of Swiss chard. This is my bean wall. And this is gonna be my cucumber and spaghetti wall. No, it's not spaghetti, spaghetti squash. Spaghetti squash wall. I'm expecting a much better harvest in August, September. And so far I've already eaten a lot of the lettuce that I've been growing which has been really fun because usually I don't really enjoy eating vegetables but because I spent so much time and effort to grow them from seed to a blooming beautiful leafy green plant I think they're a lot tastier so that's always great to eat more vegetables especially ones that you grew yourself in your own backyard. Now I'm just testing this out for this year but you can see I added kind of an arch. It goes pretty high up there. I know you can use a method where you get cattle fencing to make a really sturdy arch that can go over like that but I don't live anywhere near somewhere that sells cattle fencing so I could only try DIYing it with some old uh, irrigation piping or sprinkler piping that the old owners of this house had and I tried to get these kind of green rods that are pretty strong but I don't think the piping will hold up especially once the spaghetti squash starts to grow but we'll see if that actually works out and then maybe next year I can show you how to make an arch. For the most part I do believe that my plants have been growing a lot better compared to the previous years especially with the raised garden bed soil that was pretty expensive and of course I've always been adding my chicken manure fertilizer to help the plants out um, the weather hasn't been too weird uh, I mean we've had some wildfires in Canada lately I'm sure you heard of um, but so far it hasn't been too hot or too cold for the plants I I'm hoping this will finally be the year that I get an amazing harvest of delicious homegrown food. Oh, I have one more final touch. Last but not least, remember this extra one foot of cedar wood that I had left over? Well, I used my library's laser engraver and I made this kind of Minecraft sign that says, Welcome to our garden. 
on the back. Oops. Okay, on the bag it says, Welcome to Cutie Garden. So I can switch it to different sides. It turned out so nice. And I did this at the at the library. They had a laser engraver, which is so cool. And also, because in our neighborhood we're not allowed to raise backyard chickens, I got two metal chickens to decorate around my garden bed. So these are closest things I'll have to backyard chickens. Also, another question that I got a lot of in the comments was how much did all of this cost? Now, I bought the wood um, in 2021 when there were still pandemic prices, so it, it was pretty expensive. I listed everything here from the receipts, um, and now the prices are probably changed, but you can check out the links below. I linked the materials that I used. So um, here is the cost of all of the wood blocks, the soil in the first year for just a two layer garden bed. And then with the upgrade, you add another couple hundred dollars. And in total, you should have spent, well, I have spent less than a thousand dollars on all of this. I know that sounds like a lot of money, but um, it has been so fun to plant my own vegetables and that is priceless. So um, for those of you who did ask for the price though, it is here. Also, I just want to say a big thank you to libraries because um, if you check your local library, sometimes they will have resources like seed libraries where you can take some plant seeds, grow your own veggies, and then uh, the idea is that you, uh, once you harvest the veggies, you get the seeds and bring it back to the library so that you can share it with the community. And um, that is what has helped me grow half of that, like all that Swiss chard. That's from the seed library. I got some beans from the seed library. So thanks to the libraries for that. Uh, since I work at a library part-time, I do want to encourage you guys to go support your local library, check out their resources, sign up for a library card. It's free, it's the same as subscribing. The numbers just help keep things running. You might find some cool gardening books there too. Thanks for watching this video and for listening to me talk about my raised garden bed. I really do love this method of gardening a lot. It makes things a lot easier. You don't have to bend down so far. Um, it just looks pretty and cute. And my mom and I have really been enjoying growing our own food in our backyard. We're still really beginners at gardening. So if you have any expertise or experiences that you would like to share, please kindly leave a comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to see what the harvest looks like at the end of the season. And I hope you got some cool ideas from this video. I will see you guys next time. Bye.